Stone Temple Pilots heading out on tour at the end of this week, and I had a great chat with guitarist Dean DeLeo, who's not the person sitting with me here right now, by the way. That would be fellow UCR comrade Brian Rowley. Brian, is there a better combo in rock and roll than the DeLeo brothers and drummer Eric Kretz? I mean, they're certainly up there. Oh, man. I mean, you want to talk about one of the great, in my opinion, underrated rhythm sections in rock and roll. Eric Kretz and Robert DeLeo take the cake. I mean... Those those bass lines in particular are just so they're just all over the place, man. They are monstrous. And then of course, I mean, Dean has some of the wildest, jazziest chords um, in a hard rock band context. Amazing solos. I mean, they really did bridge the gap between their '60s and '70s hard rock influences mm. and and the '90s. Uh, impending grunge storm and uh yeah it's just a brilliant sound they got more sophisticated with every record too well dean and i had a great chat we talked about a lot of things including the super group that almost was with chris robinson of the black crows we discussed the tiny music album at 25 and we dig into the early early days of stp before they got signed and he also shares in what we're looking at as far as a possible new album from stone temple pilots so dean was on his way to the tour rehearsals as we spoke and uh not going to hold you guys up any further let's get straight into that interview hey dean how you doing sir hey matt i'm good how are you real good man good to speak with you our sister site loudwire does a thing called wikipedia fact or fiction and i'm always fascinated with bands um that have like a timeline that extends out further than what the average like public would be aware of and so wikipedia says that you and robert met scott in 1985 at a black flag show and it seems like from that point, Mighty Joe Young take, starts taking shape pretty quickly after that. So I, I just wondered, like, how accurate is that kind of sequence of events? Well, yeah, let's see. I think Robert might have moved to California from New Jersey in 84. Yeah. And I kind of came out a little bit after, so I came out in 85. So I think, I think Scott and Robert met first. And Scott kind of had a band um, with um, some of his longtime friends um, that he you know, went to school with and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think this was around 85. So I think around 87, um, you know, they were kind of gigging around, uh, around Los Angeles and uh, wherever they could play, you know, quite honestly. And I, I remember it was a small label i i believe it was called savage records i think Mm -hmm. pretty sure and they gave them a little kind of like a demo deal like here's here's a few thousand bucks go in and cut a few things let's see what you got and that's when i got the call around 1987 because um the guitar player at the time um just couldn't quite lay some solos down and so robert you know you know suggested to to the guys like him hey, let's have my brother come up i was in san diego at the time he says let's have my brother come up and he'll he'll play on him so i kind of went up into i think the, the studio was in hollywood and uh i played a couple solos and and uh, i think it was then and there where scott kind of really took a, a a look at what he kind of wanted the future to be and what what the realm of guitar and what he was doing wanted to be, you know, and, uh, you know, it wasn't too long after that. They, they asked me, they said, um, man, do you want to be in the band? And, and, uh, I think, uh, my goodness, by 1988, 89, I was in the band and we were off and running, gigging everywhere and anywhere we could between Bakersfield and San Diego. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was it was those days where we 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 played gigs, and um, you know, if there was eight people in the place, six of them worked there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? Fantastic, man. And um, and we were doing one of these shows in particular this night at the Shamrock out on uh, Vermont and Western, kind of out in East LA. And it was an interesting club. It was very not very deep, but it was very wide. Like when you're on the stage, the wall was like literally like felt like it was 30 feet in front of you, but the the width of the club was, was huge. So we're playing at this place, the shamrock. And again, it was one of those nights where there was no one there. And, um, you know, we didn't care. We just played like it was going to be our last day alive. And, um, 
we had just kind of been writing a lot of the stuff that uh, actually appears on core. And I remember we were so excited when Robert brought forth um, the song Sin oh. on the first record. And uh, we didn't have any vocals or anything to it yet, but we, we loved it so much. I remember playing that night uh, instrumentally. And um, like I said, man, we were just, you know, really having a great time, a great night. And lo and behold, Tom Carolyn from Atlantic Records was there and saw us, and that's how we got signed. Wow. And so what year was that that you guys got signed then? I'd say 90, 89, 90. Wow. That's why I wanted to ask about that because, like, I think for a lot of folks, like, you know, their first memory of STP is they get the record in 93, but you guys really were gigging for a long time before that. Well, I mean, if you want to go back before that, when Robert and I were still in New Jersey, you know, Robert and I were cutting our teeth on the Jersey Shore and all those different places to play down there. Um, you know, Robert was 15, 16 years old, and we were playing um, all over. And, and Scott, of course, was um, – Scott and Eric. Eric, you know, coming down from the Bay Area, I got to see some of the cats Eric played with, some guy by the name of John Wiedermeyer and um, – uh, Andy, oh my goodness, I can't think of Andy's last name, but Eric, Eric was really playing with some extraordinary musicians, extraordinary. I mean, those guys were kids and they were playing, you know, a lot of really heavy fusion stuff and really great players. So that's kind of where Eric was coming from at a, you know, a very young age. And Scott, of course, was, was, you know, tinkering around a lot too with, with different bands and, and different, uh, different things down in, in, in Southern California. So yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we were all kind of, playing although we were a continent apart and one end of the state from one another we were all kind of um doing it you know so let's flash forward as we work our way towards the present timeline um one of the things that you guys have had going on this year is the 25th anniversary of the tiny music record which was such a groundbreaking album from your band one which shows a really incredible progression from the first two records and I mean, come on, man, before we even get to that record, I mean, Purple showed an incredible progression from Core. Um, so you guys were really moving in an exciting direction. You rent a house to record the album. Other bands kind of doing that in the time, Counting Crows to name one, Cool Records always came out as a result of doing that. So for you, what are kind of your favorite memories uh, of the experience of recording Tiny Music? Well, that's exactly what you said. We... Um, um... Robert kind of uh, was spending a lot of time up in the Santa Barbara, Santa Inez Valley at the time. He, he suggested that maybe we go to Santa Inez and, and make a record. So we had this, um, this lovely woman by the name of Bobby. I, I forget her last name. She found us the property and it was literally um, this house that enabled all of us to live there. Um, for the four band members lived there with a couple of crew members to help out set up and, um, and we were in this, this house on a hundred acres and, um, we just basically lived and wrote and recorded this record in this house. And it was very, very communal, which, you know, can be really, really cool. And it really lends itself to what's, what's happening musically on this, you know, real communal living and you're, you know, out of this, this beautiful hundred acres and, um, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think that, that, that house surely dictated a lot what the record sound like. And not only just, you know, psychologically, but, but, you know, tonally we utilized the different rooms of the house. Like for instance, you know, I know the drums for, uh, tumble on the rough were cut in a cedar closet upstairs. We just had to run lines up the stairs, down the hallway, up into a cedar closet. Wow. And then, you know, Fantastic. We, did, we cut drum. Yeah. We cut the drums for big bang baby, like out on the front lawn. <laughs> and, and it was just, it was just fun. I, and you know, the guitar sound that, that beautiful reverb you hear. Um, and so I know that was the natural reverb from the foyer of the, of the house. Wow. So we, we utilized the, the sound of the rooms. 
That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I know that I heard a story at one point. I think it was Grand Funk that like basically set their amps up like back, you know, in the back of the recording studio outside and just were like getting the reverb off of like the ravine or whatever. So it's just like it's crazy the stuff you can do recording wise to get sounds. Uh, that's, that's beautiful. I love that story. Yeah, I mean, you know, what, if it's if it's there, just why not try it, you know? Well, so before we move off that record, um, Lady Picture Show is one that when that hit the radio, it's just an astounding song. Like, what are your memories of recording that song? Um, well, I remember Robert showing that to us. That's another one Robert and Scott wrote. I remember um, we were kind of sitting around and uh, Robert Robert pulled that one out. And I remember just seeing Scott's eyes light up. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good, man. And... Um, you know, that, that was always, you know, the greatest gift anyone could, could give one another when you're, when you're sitting there and you're presenting a song and, and you see someone really, really smitten by it and really, really wanting to be a, be a, a piece of it or a part of it, you know, and that, that's a really, um, a great thing. It, it sure as heck is a lot better than like, I don't know if I'm feeling that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, which happens from time to time, but I do remember in particularly with that track, Robert playing that on a, on, I'm sure it was an acoustic guitar. And, um, yeah, I surely was, was thrilled about it. And so was Eric. And I, I just remember seeing Scott's eyes light up. Like, uh, that's, yeah, that's really good, man. And not even emotionally, but is that a difficult song to perform for any reason? Cause it doesn't seem like you guys play that one that, that often. Um, so I wondered if technically if it was a hard a hard song to play. You know what's funny? We're we're in rehearsals right now because we're we're gearing up to do a little tour here yeah. coming up. So we're in rehearsals now, and we were just we were just talking yesterday. Why didn't we write songs like? Why didn't we write more songs in the vein of ACD? So I could just play all in first position, a D G E and a C, you know, <laughs> or whatever. But you know the STP songs are challenging they're they are hard to play you know they're hard to play and there are a lot of very uh you know a lot of different fingerings quarterly speaking you know and um you know when you when you're up there and you're you know you're you're entertaining and you're performing yeah it's it's um it's not as easy as just you know plunking out chords in the first position you know what i mean yeah and the chords for lady picture show are 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 on the tougher side of, of, of chordings, you know, cause, um, you know, th those chords are all about letting the, the, the bottom E and the, and the B and the E really ring out. So you got to really kind of, uh, get your hand on the neck just right. <laughs> well, as you mentioned, STP's, uh, about to head out on tour. And, uh, this morning I was sitting here listening to one of the live shows that you guys put out during the pandemic on Nugs from London recorded in 2019 at the O2. <laughs> And Jeff really brings an incredible energy to this band. He does something really difficult, which is to step out and grab the microphone and deliver a performance that honors the essence of what you all created in these songs with Scott, yet he has his own thing, well, too. Well, especially over the racket we're making. I, it, yeah. it really knocks me back. I mean, I don't know how singers do it, man. It, it is something very hard to step up to a microphone and make it happen, so... I mean, those are the cats that are really, really working up there. It, it, you know, you heard me just talk about like, yeah, some chords are harder than others, but <laughs> you know, singers, singers are, are really physically delivering something. You know, there, there's a, a, a whole physical push behind that performance, you know, and it's, it's really, um, it's incredible to, to, you know, witness a great singer that, that can sing over a, you know, a band making a bunch of noise, especially. You guys have made some great new music with Jeff and two albums to be exact. And if it seems like, it seems like if word is to be believed, um, are you guys looking at doing another record? Has his work begun on that recording wise yet? Uh, we have not, but there's always a ton of material sitting around. Um, nice. But we have not. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think maybe we may do something. I would say uh, in early 22, we'll see what happens. Cool. Well, Perdita was awesome. I was thinking about a few of my favorite acoustic things this morning from the past 30 years, like Alice in Chains' Sap and their Unplugged thing, to name one. 
like Tesla's five man acoustical jam. Um, uh, acoustic albums are really great captures of a moment. And it's also, it seems like not an easy thing to do, but it seems like that had to feel pretty good for you guys with that record. Yeah, that one was pretty cathartic, man. That was definitely a snapshot in time for sure. Uh, yeah, that that did feel feel good to get out of the, out of your bones. What was sort of the impetus to do that record? Uh, like I said, you know, it was more uh, of a snapshot in time of kind of what we were kind of going through personally and kind of that sort of thing. It was a very interesting time. I guess it was around what two thousand eighteen about. I think. Yeah. Two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. It was just. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting time. We'll just leave it at that. Got it. Okay. Um, well, as far as this upcoming tour here that you're about to launch out on, um, what can you tell folks about this upcoming run? Like, what, you know, is there anything notable you guys have been rehearsing? Like, what are you looking forward to about this touring run? I know that initially you guys were set to go out with Bush, and of course that got that got rearranged because they kind of had to step back. But um, what are you looking forward to about this run? Well, I'll tell you, we're going to be out with our dear, dear friends, um, hailing out of the beautiful state of uh, Tennessee and the beautiful city of Nashville. Our dear friends, Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown. Oh, nice. We'll be out with us on that one. And um, I spent a summer with those guys. We had Tyler out with, uh, uh, it was us and, and rival sons. And we had such a great summer. And um, I'll tell you, for me, uh, to be able to spend a lot of time with both Tyler and Graham and getting to play, uh, just sitting around the dressing rooms and stuff and getting to play guitar and, and kind of stumble upon new things and one another, uh, each of us showing one another new things. And it, that's, it's just, you know, just, just kind of sitting around and, and talking the talk, musically speaking, you know? Mm, yeah. 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 They seem like good folks. I don't, I haven't, I haven't met them uh, personally, but they seem awesome. Yeah. Love those cats, man. Great, great guys. Well, last couple of things here. Um, first of all, um, you guys looked at one point at forming a band with Chris Robinson. Um, I would guess that was probably pre Army of Anyone. Um, what were kind of your memories of that experience? Well, you know, again, I just, I just, you know, kind of spoke about a singer just a just a minute or two ago, and and how really, really incredible it is when you get next to a singer or, or a guy that can really deliver and. My oh my, Chris was, I, I can't say enough uh, about him. He, he was, uh, he is incredible. Just, just absolutely amazing. And, you know, we were playing pretty loud. <laughs> we were playing pretty loud, man. I'll tell you, it was interesting because I could hear his voice as loud as it was coming out of his mouth as it was through the speakers. Like that's how much air he was pushing. I was standing next to him and I could, and I could hear him I could hear him acoustically before, you know, as loud as what was coming out of the PA. That's, that's how loud he was. But it was, um, that was a really, really beautiful uh, few weeks we spent uh, putting that together. And, you know, it just, it just didn't come together. We, we were all kind of a little too busy at the time and the other things going on. But we did get together for a couple of weeks and, and we wrote uh, a bunch of songs and we kind of recorded them onto, onto cassettes live in the room. And, um, it was, uh, it wasn't bad. Oh, that's awesome. Well, final bit here, you guys have a good history of honoring your influences and, uh, you guys took out cheap trick as an opener on the tiny music tour. I wondered if you had a good story from that period from being around the cheap trick guys. Well, you know, you know, coming up, uh, I saw those guys a few times, and um, I actually, I actually have a. Um, I was at a, at a guitar show. I think it was in like Tulsa or something. Larry Briggs was putting on like a guitar show in Tulsa, and I saw a poster of uh, the show that I saw in 1976 at the Capitol Theater in Passaic, New Jersey. Wow. The opener was. UFO. Oh man. Yeah. So I bought the poster of course, and I had it framed and, um, uh, you know, my son has it now 
who's who's 18. He has the he has the poster framed up. And before I left for the tour, I, I took a photo of it. And of course, you know, uh, we all got pretty close on that tour. It's, it's, it's one of the things about being on the road, you know. I mean, you hear some stories of uh, you know bands kind of clashing, but I've never experienced that. We always, you know, start a tour with somebody and you wind up leaving, and it becomes very very um, everybody becomes very close and everybody stays in touch and I just spoke to Rick last week and um so yeah I showed I showed those guys the uh the, the poster I was like I was at the show man I was uh I was um uh let me think how old I was I was yeah I was 15 16 years old oh wow <laughs> UFO and cheap trick at that age that's so awesome <laughs> yeah and uh they, the theater is no longer there. It was called the Capitol Theater. It was actually the first place I saw a concert. My first concert was there at the uh, Capitol Theater seeing Uriah Heep. Oh, nice. <laughs> Dude, that would have been, that would have been so, prime time for Uriah Heep, too. Oh, prime time, man. Prime. Ken Hensley, Mick Box. Oh, it was the original lineup, man. Yeah. Dude, that's so cool. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, getting to know those cats on a personal level and spend time with them and, you know, watch them play and, you know, just being such huge fans and, you know, growing up with those records, it was just uh, amazing. And and once again, I'm going to go back to the singer, you know, when you really get to witness a great singer and man, Robin Zander, he's, uh, he's up there, you know? Yeah. Insane. Well, cool. Well, I'll let you run on, but um, thanks as always for the t- time, Dean. Have a great one out there. L- l- good luck yeah, on this tour. Thank you. See you. I appreciate it. Bye bye, Dean. Thanks. Bye bye.